So I just turned 25 over the weekend, and it's really making me think more about the current structure of my business and my overall strategy. And the more that I think about it, the more that I realize I'm not actually currently very happy with the status quo, or at least I think and I know that I can do better, and I want to make some changes. Not like big, scary, super duper scary changes like quitting YouTube or not making business content anymore. I love business content. I love helping people. But more like more like Kelsey 2.0 kind of changes. Does that make sense? Like just how I can be better at all the things that I love doing. So anyway, I want to think more about the next evolution of my business and my YouTube channel, how I can more effectively help creative people learn about things like business and marketing and selling stuff, and how I can create a business for myself, right? That feeds me creatively that I find really fulfilling and that allows me to spend time making art and sharing it without causing burnout. So I want to spend some time in this video thinking about my current strategy and just like sharing with you what my thoughts are right now when it comes to business and the next evolution of my own business. So it'll be a chatty video, very casual, very like co-worky. So get any materials that you want to work on today and let's just hang out together. Thank you so much to Squarespace for their continued support of this channel and for sponsoring this video. So I have been reading a lot of business, marketing, and productivity books lately, and they've been sparking some really interesting and I think important discussions with myself about the future of my business. Books like The 12 Week Year by Brian Moran and Michael Lennington, Buy Back Your Time by Dan Martell, and Cal Newport's new book, Slow Productivity, all talk about the importance of considering the sustainability of your business when it comes to your own labor. The reality is that most small business owners are working 40, 50, 60, even 70 to 80 hours a week on their business, often seven days a week, just to keep things running. In that sense, they haven't really built a business as much as they have a modest to low paid job and honestly, a job that is basically a prison. Their business is built on top of and around them, and they are so vital to it that they can't step away. They can't take time off, even sometimes just a week, or else things start to crumble and revenue starts to decline. I have talked to a lot of artists, and once your business gets off the ground, this seems to be the number one issue they struggle with. And I'm growing increasingly concerned about this problem in my own life. And so I want to try and get ahead of it. And the more I think about the goals for my life outside of my own artistic and professional ambitions, personal goals, like being able to travel more and own a home, the more I realize that my current income and business structure doesn't really support that. But before we get into the changes that I'm going to make in my business, I want to give you some context, some important insights, I guess, about me. I don't discuss my personal life much on this channel, and there's a myriad of very good reasons why I try to keep things mostly private, but I realize that without this context, my focus of business and marketing, um, especially when it comes to art, can feel unartistic or even inauthentic. Having financial stability is a very new experience for me. It is my number one priority for my business, and I have honestly grown to love learning about creative entrepreneurship and business and marketing in pursuit of this goal. So both of my parents, and I guess me, but I was very young at the time, have experienced homelessness and not the couch surfing with friends and family kind, uh, like between leases, like the, the streets kind, like the homeless shelters kind of sleeping under a bridge, um, existing near very dangerous people kind. And my mom is actually the reason that I got into art in the first place. The creative parts of me come from her. She was the one to introduce me to sidewalk chalk and colored pencils and micron pens. And our relationship is really complicated. She is the only one of my biological parents that I still speak to. Um, both of my parents have some pretty serious illnesses, mental illnesses. And my mom struggled with addiction her entire life. Um, she's a good person and I care about her, but she was not at all equipped to be a parent. If you know, you know. And I think seeing her struggle for so long to gain traction in the art world and hold down a job and stay sober was one of the big reasons why I avoided pursuing art as a career for so long. There was simply no example of someone in my life doing this successfully, of breaking into the art world or even just having any kind of successful business more generally. And so as soon as I realized that I wanted to give this a serious go, I knew that there was so much that I needed to start learning about business and marketing. 
I am 25 years old. I just turned 25 a week ago and I needed to do a huge deep dive into this and I'm still doing a deep dive into this. Um, I honestly just needed to convince myself at the time that it was even doable. And so somewhere between 2021 and 2022, I started to play around with sharing the things that I was learning um, on my channel here on YouTube and people liked it. They found it helpful. And it was and is really cool to have this experience of researching business and marketing, getting better at the skills that are important for my own business, and then teaching them in totally free content to people three, four, five steps behind me and see them achieve the goals like going full time even faster than I did. Sketches of Shay is a great example of um, someone that bought one of my digital products and watched my videos and then was able to go full time in a year. And I'm not taking credit for her success by any stretch of the imagination. I don't want people to think that, but it's so cool to see her talk about the stuff that I make and how it's helped her. It's, it's an enormously personally fulfilling experience. And I realized for myself that there was there was truly no more experience more fulfilling in my life than helping someone double the revenue of their business or go full time with their passion or make their top performing video ever or help them realize their own you know professional ambitions. It feels so genuinely incredible to help someone with that, to understand this tangible impact that you've made on their lives. And over time, the goals of my business and this channel and everything that I do online have expanded. I started out wanting to share my journey to try and go full-time as an artist here on YouTube, and now I am full-time. I get to spend hours every week making art, both in terms of my oil paintings and these videos that I share with you. And now I have a second goal, helping artists and creative people learn about business and marketing and all of the skills that go into creative entrepreneurship. But linking all of this back to the books that I mentioned earlier, there's a lot that artists can learn from successful businesses and entrepreneurs in other industries. Regardless of niche and the specific products that you're selling, many business owners struggle with the same problems. This is not unique to artists in any way. Every business struggles with building an audience, right? finding your customers, figuring out how to stand out in a saturated market, how to sell your products, and how to create such memorable and amazing customer experiences that people come back for more. And most importantly, how to manage your time and juggle your priorities in such a way that you can get all of that done without going insane and without working 70, 80 hours a week. Because I don't know about you, but I'm not interested in building a business that requires me to overwork myself in order to stay afloat. I actually have a chronic degenerative autoimmune condition called Hashimoto's, and the chronic fatigue that comes with that for me forces me to prioritize my efforts on the things that matter. If Instagram isn't getting results for me, I don't post on Instagram. I think I've only posted like six times in the past year, and that's because I just don't have time for it right now. I don't have energy for it. The things that move the needle financially and keep me creatively and personally fulfilled are the things that I focus on more than anything else. And that's a big part of what the books I've been reading, like Slow Productivity, The 12-Week Year, and Buy Back Your Time, talk about how to give more attention to the things that matter and do more in less time while taking very healthy breaks. And not only that, but figuring out how to delegate and what to delegate in your business so that you can pay more attention to the critical tasks that you love doing. I am still a solo operation, so I do literally everything. It is just me. Um, but I think this is really important to keep in mind as people grow and scale. But I really want to do deep dives on these books, maybe even make a whole series kind of translating this kind of um, traditional business advice for people like us. But um, yeah, I, I think there's so much that we can learn here and apply to our own lives and stuff like this just lights me up inside. I love problem solving, be it in business or in art. Complex puzzles like this are really fun for me. That's like a part of why I just love oil painting, because oil painting is such a challenge you are like my brain is active the entire time. It's so like stimulating. But anyway, all of those books have me figuring out how I can scale sustainably in my own business because as great as 100K in annual revenue is, it actually looks a lot more like 70K after taxes and then a 40K salary for myself in terms of like eventual profit, which doesn't actually get me very far in a high cost of living area like the San Francisco Bay Area. I know that this sounds like very first world problems and I don't want to seem like I'm complaining. I am very grateful. Um, but 
If I want to help support my mom and my half-siblings, I want to put money aside for a house and save for retirement, I need to strive for more. And I, I, don't, think that, I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting success, to be honest. Um, yeah. But let's talk about scaling, right? The ways that I'm planning to shift and grow my business going forward and the various things that I already do to help me spend more time on the things that matter and less on all the boring admin stuff. Number one is art licensing. Art licensing is basically where you sell a brand the rights to use your artwork on things like marketing, material, or products. I would love to see my artwork on wine labels and perfume bottles and candles. I've talked about this before, but this is a kind of a broader goal that I'm working toward. It will take me years to build the really solid portfolio and the knowledge and connections that I need to turn this into a profitable part of my business. So often people want to see like immediate results online. That's just kind of not how things work. Like this is going to take a long time. This is very much a long-term project that I am steadily chipping away at every time you see me work on a painting. I'm getting better and I am building a new piece in my portfolio that I could eventually license to a company to put on perfume bottles, candles, whatever. But art licensing seems, from my research so far, as a very scalable option for me. And for a lot of artists, actually. You can have this body of work that you're building over time, which is what you would be doing anyway, and then you can retain the legal copyright of your work and the ability to sell prints of your work and talk about it, post about it, etc., etc., and you get periodic royalty checks or a big lump sum whenever you negotiate these contracts. For artists that are cool with having their work commercialized like this, it seems fantastic. The second thing that I kind of already do, actually, is continue with print-on-demand and big, infrequent shop updates. So I personally do not like the idea of packaging orders all day long. This does not spark joy for me. I know some people love it, but that's just not me. It's right up there next to folding and putting away my laundry or emptying the dishwasher on the lists of tasks that I just don't like. Um, yeah, I currently save myself quite a lot of time by having my art prints be print-on-demand products. I've partnered with a really great company, Finer Works, to produce museum archival quality prints of my work, and they do a far better job at producing and packaging my prints than I ever could. This is one of the things that Buy Back Your Time by Dan Martell talks about, actually, how by delegating tasks to specialists, you're actually increasing the quality of different parts of your business and replacing a task that maybe you don't love to do at the same time. One of the other things that I do in order to save myself some time in my business is to do very big shop updates a couple of times a year instead of much more regular, smaller ones. So I get to spend five, six months painting and then one month taking everything to get photographed and ordering print proofs and making the product listings on my website and grouping all of these tasks together instead of trying to do them piecemeal saves me a ton of time, I think, and just energy. This unfortunately means that my website is often a little, at least like a little bit out of date, but it's honestly a trade-off that I'm more than happy to make. And I don't know if anyone else really struggles with this, um, but task switching is a huge pain for me because there are so many tasks associated with running a business and different modes that you need to be in to kind of succeed at those tasks. Like my brain when I'm painting is very different from my brain when I'm answering emails or editing a video. I find it really helpful Dear God, there's so much traffic noise. I find it really helpful to just group similar tasks together as much as possible because switching between these different like modes in my brain takes a lot of effort. And honestly, if I can just spend one workday just painting, that's awesome. Like I wanna, I wanna focus my energy on like these long stretches of the same kind of work. And the third way that I wanna shift my business plan going forward is to pivot a little bit away from one-on-one -on -one mentorship. So like we talked about, helping artists work their business and marketing muscles and get better at everything involved in creative entrepreneurship is really important to me. It is work that I find just genuinely enormous personal fulfillment in. And there are a couple ways that I do this in my business. Number one is free videos, just like this one, right? And the hundreds of other business-focused videos on my channel, some featuring art like this one and some with talking head videos. The second one that I do is low ticket digital products, things like Notion templates and my art YouTubers workbook. I am currently working on a very brand new edition of that will be like twice as long and hopefully even better. And third, lastly, we have mentorship. 
I don't currently have any availabilities right now. This video is on a sales pitch, but every so often I open up limited spots of week-long intensive programs or a three-month mentorship. And mentorship is something that I used to get and still get a lot of people asking for. Um, I talked about this when I first began to offer it, but I felt and still do feel no small amount of imposter syndrome, um, but I kept getting requests for it via email and DM when I didn't offer this, and it felt a little silly to not at least give it a try a couple times. So earlier this year, I did a bunch of free calls. People would like submit a little application telling me about themselves, and then I would pick a couple and do some calls to kind of get practice, and I even made some videos about a few of them and had some initial ideas for a podcast that I ended up not having enough time for, which is classic. But those free calls boosted my confidence and gave me some really great testimonials and feedback. I actually helped a one-week intensive mentorship client make her most successful YouTube video ever. And she launched this um, cool like art style mentorship program for her audience on Instagram. And she had a huge following, but had no idea how to monetize it. And helping her figure that out was really cool and fun and like fulfilling for me. And she got results, which was great. Yeah, but there's, but there's kind of an inherent scalability issue with mentorship. I'm still trading my time for money and I'm only helping one person in the process. It feels like there should be a happy middle ground here. And that's what I've been trying to play around with this year. A couple months ago, I had a breakthrough with this problem. I held my very first weekend workshop called the Artist's Business Blueprint, where I taught people the fundamentals of business and marketing and guided them through how to write a business plan in a live virtual event. It was something like eight hours of live instruction. It had homework assignments and co-working sessions, the works. It wasn't a small amount of effort by any means, but it was quite scalable, I think. I had close to 100 people go to this event. I had never done anything like this before. It was totally new to me, but it felt really good to, to give a concise, refined version of what I might normally go over with a mentorship client to a crowd of dozens of people asking really great questions and getting a ton out of the experience. It's been about like a month or two since that workshop happened and my business brain has been kind of like, like quietly churning in the background while I've been working on a bunch of new oil paintings, one of which you are seeing right now. And I think I'm slowly discovering what my future might look like in terms of the educational side of my business because ultimately anything that I do, any project that I go on to sorry, any project that I start, like a podcast or workshops or an online course, whatever, ultimately takes time away from making art in my business and selling my art. And that is kind of why I started this. That's what I want to focus on. So even though um, my business videos perform better by every stretch of the imagination, they perform better. And um, people just love the educational content that I create. They seem to get a lot out of it. I help people when I do it. I do want to make sure that I'm staying true to the heart of my business and the reason why I started this in the first place. I think I am kind of slowly figuring this stuff out. I'm still hammering out the details and nothing is set in stone. So don't hold me to this, but here's what I'm thinking. I wanna hold four workshops next year, so one every three months, all based around business and marketing. Something pretty narrow in topic, revolving around one particular action item or measurable goal. Things that I have tangible, real life experience in doing, either myself or helping clients with, something like writing a business plan or creating a sales page or designing and launching a digital product, etc. And the big weakness here is the student implementation side of it. I can show up and I can teach people all day long. I can, you know, put thousands of hours of effort into a product or a curriculum, but if they're not putting things into practice and taking action, I feel like I might as well not be there. I don't want people's money if I'm not actually helping them. So I want to have a really, like, world-class refund policy for these workshops. Like, I want to make sure that people get their money's worth. Um, but I'm also trying to brainstorm ways that I can incentivize action in the curriculum itself. Like, I would love, my, I, my big goal for this is I would love for someone to take all four of these events, put them into practice, and then go full-time by the end of the year. That would be incredible. But the question is, how I can create an environment that fosters that kind of transformation? If these workshops are three to seven days long, and I'm doing four of them a year, that's maybe two months of effort working on the curriculum and the marketing, and a max of, you know, one month actually teaching. And I think this project 
what enabled me to help people at scale and do what I love and find really fulfilling, which is teaching, while also creating a more sustainable business for myself in terms of effort and more financial stability. Like, this is something that I could do in addition to YouTube and oil painting and trying to sell my work that would give me more freedom to keep making art without directly trading my time for money in quite the same way as coaching or a traditional 9 to 5. It enables me to continue helping people and experiencing that personal fulfillment that I get from doing so while staying true to and honoring the original purpose of my business, making and selling art. Speaking of YouTube and the content that I make in this platform, I've been doing a couple things differently over the past couple of months, and I only intend to make more changes going forward, so I want to talk about that just a little bit. So basically, for all of 2023, I felt pretty unsatisfied with the direction of my channel. Art-focused videos were consistently getting fewer views than business-focused videos. I was getting loads of sponsorship offers and brand deal offers, but they all preferred to sponsor business videos, and so the monetary incentive was really difficult for me to ignore, right? In part because, like I said, um, financial stability is really new for me, but it left me feeling very creatively unfulfilled. And I don't know, it seemed like it was what the viewers wanted too, so I stopped making art videos quite as much. But I think in a lot of ways, this problem is somewhat inherent to the niche that I've created for myself. Like I'm not just an art YouTuber, right? And I probably never will be. I love the insider baseball type stuff, the business and the marketing and the entrepreneurship side of things to ever give it up, but there's a balance to it, right? And it's been a very gradual process with a lot of stumbling around in the dark to try and find that balance for myself. And I feel like I'm very much and I feel like I'm very much still figuring things out. There's probably always going to be a certain amount of tension between these things. But in the beginning of this year, I decided to start making some pretty serious changes in the direction of this channel. And the past seven, eight months or so of uploads have been reflecting this change. My I've Girl Boss Too Close to the Sun video is maybe the best example of the style that I want to have going forward. I've started focusing more energy on the craft and the editing and the videography, taking things to a new level making shot lists for my videos and hanging out with creators like Wholesome Simon and Natalie Lynn and American Baron and Frantic Frames at events called Creator Camp. And being exposed to so many amazing, talented people has really inspired me and pushed me to become a better YouTuber, like a better creator and a better artist. Considering my art as more than just the oil paintings that I work on, right, but the videos themselves, trying to figure out how I can make art about art and make art within art. I would love to share business and marketing knowledge in ways that feel dynamic and creative and entertaining, and every so often going above and beyond the standard talking head video. I will always be an oil painter, and I will also always be interested in business, and I need to figure out ways to make this sustainable for me. That's kind of the future. I'm really excited for these changes and for us to grow together as a community. I want my videos to be longer and more storytelling focused and just a little bit better over time. Not all at once or not all right away, but I'll be stretching my baby videographer muscles a little bit more. But all of this, the art videos, the workshops, none of this would be possible if I did not have amazing sponsors like Squarespace to support the work that I'm doing on this channel. So I wanna take a minute to thank them for sponsoring this video and a huge chunk of all of my videos this year and tell you some Squarespace features that you may not have heard of before. So here's the deal. Squarespace can be your online store, your portfolio website, and your email marketing, course hosting, membership, scheduling, and invoicing platform. It can do all of that, and it can do it really well. Imagine a world where you're not paying a million dollars a month for a ton of subscriptions, but just one price for all of those features, and it was hosted on your own website, branded exactly how you wanted it to be, and was perfect for you. On top of that, Squarespace's fluid engine system makes designing a perfect website tailored to your brand extremely easy. So not only 
Is your website the hub for everything you're doing online, but it's perfectly aligned with your aesthetic as a creative, it hosts your work, it has your email on it, it's incredible. I have been using Squarespace for years. It makes me tens of thousands of dollars a year on my online store. And whenever I need a sales page for an online coaching program or a three-day live workshop that I wanna promote, I use Squarespace. It is so easy to use. I love the flexibility of their drag and drop editor and the ability to further customize your site with code if you need to. And they're adding new features all the time. If you want to give Squarespace a try, you can support the channel by going to squarespace.com slash Kelsey Rodriguez and using my code Kelsey Rodriguez for 10% off your first order of a website or domain. If you're interested in signing up for that waitlist that I mentioned, it's in the description and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.